Well, good evening, everybody. Michael Soothing here. I am going to do a fishing haul video because now I'm in the mood for some fishing. You saw I did the fish booklet video and also I did um, the real unboxing video and by the way that reel works great um, I love it it casts a long very long distance um, dozens of yards okay and with the and um, it's got a great drag on it uh, a very well defined um, and sensitive drag that you can set the mechanism is smooth it doesn't bind up or jam up at all. I really love that thing. I've had a lot of different reels in my life, all different kinds. Bait casting, spinning reels of all sizes. Um, I've had many of the uh, bait, ca uh, the um, push button casting reels, uh, you know, spin cast, but um, this one is the best one I've had. Uh, for freshwater fishing in particular. Um, nothing beats a good spinning reel, but I'm, I'm rambling. Let me get on with this video, which is I'm trying to see if I can get a decent thumbnail without taking a separate picture because I'm, you know, lazy at heart. All right, so I like to be relaxed when I shoot these videos, you know, I don't want to have to put too much time and effort or I won't make as many of them, right? And I want to make you a lot of videos. Anyway, I have this haul stop, see? And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this, uh, change the tripod angle and put it all on this tabletop, take it out one at a time and tell you what I got and maybe what I might do with it. All right, so let me pause. I hope the crinkles aren't too loud because, you know, the microphone always picks up crinkles much louder than it sounds to the human ear because of the frequency response range that crinkles are in versus the human voice and other sounds, so at least for these particular microphones. Sorry, didn't mean to poke you, poke at you, it's rude. Well, anyway, um, I need a sip of water before I start all that. If you don't mind. And of course, um, sorry about that bang. I have this funny little snack. Did I show this to you in another video? I can't remember. These are sort of a sugary coated cashew. You see the yellow color. Probably not like a cashew. You've seen them chocolate coated probably. You know what this is? It's so strange and different. It's like a curry flavored cashew. You never think of curry really as being something you would combine with a sugary coating and a cashew, but it's actually pretty good. I'll try one. It's a little bit strange, but hmm, nonetheless, it's not too bad. All right. Let me change the tripod and camera angle, and then we'll take a look at the haul of fishing stuff that we got, and see what you think. All right, everybody, here is our bag of fishing stuff, and um, the fishing equipment haul. And so let's take the stuff out one at a time and see what we got. Sometime in the future, I will do a video um, showing you what 
is in my current freshwater fishing bag that I take with me when I go fishing for streams and lakes. I've done a couple of those in the past, but it's... Pardon me, everybody. The phone rang for a moment, so I took care of that. And now we're back to this fishing equipment haul. So let's check out what's in here. First, I have to have a little bit of this uh, used swimming pool water, as uh, someone so cleverly put it. The water here has chlorine in it, and so it's not the tastiest. I should have gone to the store and got some bottled water, but maybe I'll do that in a little while. But meanwhile, let's see what's in here. Now the first thing I have here is the Fish Sniffer Magazine. See? Fish Sniffer Magazine. Are you seeing this this way? Or are you seeing it this way? I'm not exactly sure. Um, because I have my viewfinder upside down. And I think you're seeing it like this. Right? So, uh, hopefully this works for you. Anyway, I'm going to do... This is like the latest news on fishing in the area. And so what I'm going to do is... I'm going to do a standalone video going through this paper. An ASMR will read through this and I'll be chewing gum or something while I'm doing it. So I'll put that aside, but I'll use this as my guide to tell me where I should go locally in the Sacramento area when I get back there for some fishing. Fall fishing. Now, we have here... Let's see what we got. Here are some salmon egg hooks. Small salmon egg hooks, see? These are size 10. They're gold, but I also have some size 12, and the uh, they're smaller than 10s. And what these are good for is you can put a little piece of worm on these, right, and catch a very small bluegill, and then you use that bluegill as bait for bass fishing. It's a tactic I've used in the past, and a technique I've used in the past that worked pretty well for me. I'm going to give that a try. So that's why I have some very, very small hooks here. Salmon egg hooks, in this case. It works good also with Eagle Claw number 12 or 14 hooks, tied on a very thin leader or line. So I have three packets of those. I have here some Stren monofilament line, okay? And this is um, got a certain fluorescence to it, so it's easy to see in cloudy weather. And um, this is for heavier duty, either very light saltwater fishing, because it's eight pound test, or heavy duty freshwater fishing like bass or steelhead, um, you know, andromedas fish and things like that. Next we have here, this is a steelhead lure. It could be used for small salmon also. This is like a watermelon kind of color apex sort of a green and watermelon. They work very well for steelhead or salmon. And um, it's got a little, you can see it's got a little orange spinner on it. You know, and then um, a leader that ties onto a swivel. So, uh, trout, salmon, walleye, things like that. Really very good for those types of fish. Here we have 
for my fishing bag. Very important. Pistachios, eh? Pistachios. In case I need a snack. And uh, you can eat these when your hands are like gunky from, you know, fish bait and handling fish and so forth. You can eat a pistachio without ever touching it. Crack it open, pop the pistachio in your mouth, and you never really have to touch anything but the shell, right? So, it's a clever way to have a snack. What else we got here? Mmm, don't those look yummy? It says bass love them. Some Zoom. Zoom watermelon red baby brush hog lures. You put a little lead head on the front and uh, the hook gets threaded and hangs about halfway down or up close to the lead head and you bounce it slowly along the bottom and uh, or through the water and a big bass will hit that thing, right? Okay, then we've got some plain long shank live bait. Uh, this would be like for my bluegills, right? Eagle claw hooks. That would be a very small bluegill that I would thread on there. But it's really more for minnows and things. Things like that. Here we have a great bass lure. A rebel. A rebel lure. Um, nice bright green grasshopper. Great for smallmouth bass, by the way. I've used this kind of lure very successfully in the past. It's got a diving lip on it, so when you pull it through the water, it dives down, of course. And, um, yeah, but the hooks sort of rattle a little bit. Smallmouth bass can't resist a lure like this. I'll use that. These are all for my freshwater fishing setup. Here I have some bullet weights. What you do with these is you put, you thread your line through the weight and then you, um, you can tie, if you have very light line, like a leader, which I use, and that's, the fish can't see because it's so thin in diameter, you tie the hook, after you've threaded the line through the sinker, it's got a little hole in it. Let's open one and show those who are not fishermen what we're talking about. It's got a little hole, see? See the little hole in it? And, um, focus, focus. Come on, camera, you can do it, yeah. You thread the line through that little hole, and then you tie, let's say the line is going, you know, down here, right? You tie a hook down here at the end. The sinker would be a little further away, really, a couple feet away, you know, or 18 inches away. You tie a hook right on the end of your line, and then you put a little split shot um, on the line above the sinker, and uh, that will keep it from sliding down the line, okay? And then you have enough weight to cast it way out into the water if you have a good freshwater rig. And when the fish comes and takes it, the line just moves freely. The line moves freely through that hole and um, the fish don't feel the weight of the sinker, and so uh, they bite the bait without, um, without feeling that weight on there. It's good for bottom fishing with floating bait, like trout bait that's, um, what do you call that stuff again now? Power bait. Here we have a MEPS rooster tail. This is a very popular and very effective trolling lure. When you're going along trolling, this bright spinner with all those sparkles that the sun reflects off of, uh, 
somehow entices particularly trout and kokanees, small salmon called kokanees, to strike. And it's quite a good uh, trolling lure. It's got a little hula skirt back here, you know. So just in case they like dancing girls, they'll go for that, right? Unfortunately, just like dancing girls, if you go for one, there's a hook involved, you know, at some point. So that's that. And then, of course, we have the Potsky balls of fire, salmon eggs, Potsky balls of fire. These are, of course, um, one of the best salmon egg brands. Trout love them, and uh, salmon and steelhead will bite these, but you got to make a bigger, um, you've got to put them, several of them in a little mesh bag or something like that, right? Um, make a bigger bait ball out of them. So that's, of course, a standard in freshwater fishing. Hot ski balls of fire. What else we got here? We got some little size 12 hooks again for uh, these are these, the famous Eagle Claw brand. Uh, one of the best brands, of course. I don't know which way is upside down to you, but I think this is the correct. Anyway, they're um, size 12, very small, see? very tiny. Again, this is for catching little small bluegills to use as bait for bass, bigger bass. That sounds a little bit mean, but like I told you, fish don't have frontal lobes. They don't know what's going on. They don't feel fear and pain. Not in the classic sense that you understand it. Here's a little bobber. If we want to keep our weight, I mean our bait, floating uh, a few feet below the surface, I bought a little bobber for that. Here are some gematsu red salmon egg hooks. So that way they're invisible when they get two or three feet down. And they are the same color as the salmon eggs, too. So, you know. They don't show up so much to the fish. Um, Gematsu. I think that's a Japanese brand. Let me see where they're made. Every now and then we hear loud vehicles here. Sorry about that. These are made, distributed by USA Incorporated. But where's the manufacturer? Yep. They're made in Japan. It says they're made it says down here they're made in Japan, but assembled in Thailand. That doesn't make sense to me. How do you assemble a hook? Okay? It's just one piece. You know, there's no assembly required. Maybe they mean the hooks are manufactured in Japan and then they're put in this package in Thailand with this uh, insert, this cardboard insert. I'll bet that's what they mean. I don't know. Anyway, what else we got here? We have some ball bearing snap swivels. This would be for steelhead or salmon fishing. So that if your lure is twisting in circles all the time or your bait when you're pulling it up, okay, Instead of kinking your line all up, the swivel, the ball bearing swivel, just twists so the line never gets kinked up that goes to your reel. So uh, it's also handy for snapping on different pre rigged up setups a bait setup or a lure, uh, various different kinds of lures that you set up with an 18 inch leader and a snap on. A swivel clasp, you know, so that's handy. Uh, let's see, we have the infamous. Why did I buy so many of these? I bought two 
two packages of cream spoiler shad. See there? Spoiler shad. And these are great little lures for crappie or for smallmouth bass or for largemouth bass that aren't too big or even some saltwater fishing for rockfish. Um, see how fishy they look? And even if you were never to use one for fishing, it would look so nice in the tackle box, wouldn't it? And uh, so much fun to have in there. You know, fishermen get obsessed about buying stuff that looks good to them in the store, and then they never use it once it's in their tackle box. But I'll use these at some point. Really, I will, I promise. Because I'm really into fishing. And here we have basically a larger version of the same thing. Power bait. Um, Berkeley power bait. Are these called shad also? They call these, yep, a pogey swimming shad swimming shad. Look at those great colors. It looks like a fish you would bite on if you were a bigger fish, right? It sure looks like it to me. And power bait, they'll put a scent in these usually. Power bait advantage. It says fish hold on 18 times longer. It says there, I would like to know just how you prove something like that, wouldn't you? How do you know that the fish hold on 18 times longer? Here they show the technique for fishing them. Basically, you want to bounce them close to the bottom. Optional rigging for vertical fishing, or you can swim it along and bounce it along the bottom like they're showing there. I hope this is the right way to show you. Okay, the next thing up we have here, the infamous Castmaster, that reel that I showed you, that little high quality Zebco. Usually you don't use high quality and Zebco in the same sentence, but in that case it is. That reel is perfect for this type of small lightweight lure. It can cast it dozens of yards. It's that good uh, of a reel for small lightweight lures. Um, this one is a 1 8 ounce gold and red. It would induce trout or small bass to bite. So, uh, or it's also a quite a good trolling lure, but it's great for cast and retrieve also. So, Acme Tackle Company, right? Acme. Acme, Acu. Alright, so, what else? It looks like we have one last, a big giant MEPS, MEPS Spinner Lure. This would be for salmon fishing or steelhead fishing. The MEPS Flying Sea, almost a full ounce. Now it could be cast and retrieved. Um, there are salmon where I live in Oregon that come right into Winchester Bay where you can fish from shore if you have a good outfit. But mostly this would be a trolling lure. So. Um, here, it says here on the back, here is the perfect salmon and steelhead lure for pier or stream fishing. The MEPS Flying Sea is a heavyweight spinner that drops deep and stays deep throughout the retrieve. I know places on the Umqua River where I can fish this lure in the future and try to catch steelhead and salmon with it. I'll tell you and bring you a full report if I get a fish on this lure, okay, I promise. The silver blades 
are genuine silver plate, it says. The bodies are solid brass. Wow. I'm impressed. Uh, the gold blades are polished brass. It has a perma-steel treble hook. It's a high-quality lure, Maps. And uh, I'm looking forward to trying it in the mighty Umqua River of Oregon. I think that this is just going to about do it for our fishing haul. So I'm going to put everything back away just to make sure I don't forget and leave anything here. I love the look of those, don't you? Look at all those different colors. I'll hold it up close. Gold. Green, green gold. Turquoise and orange and things. I could just sit and look at these, you know. Great bass lure today. That looks uh, enticing also. What was the thing they had when I was a kid? You made little... Oh, it was called Creepy Crawlies. You, you had this thing you would get at Christmas, and you could pour all these rubber compounds and, and metallic flakes and stuff, and, and you can make little spiders and lizards. And Anyway, I feel like having a pistachio, but then they'll get dumb. Um, no, they won't be fresh. They'll be stale. Apex, our hooks in there, and uh, our grass, grasshopper, young grasshopper. When you can snatch the pebble from my hand, it will be time for you to leave. Okay, only a few of you are going to know what I just said and why about the grasshopper. A very few of you. Old enough. Strand fishing line, good stuff. And um, I'm going to study this and see where I want to go fishing this week, later in the week. All right, everybody. That's it for now. Don't ASMR and drive, and take care, everyone. Bye bye.